In this video, we're just going to talk really briefly about phosphorylation. All across the syllabus, you're going to see this word, this idea of phosphorylation, especially in mitochondria, in the cellular, resp in cellular respiration processes, in photosynthesis, anywhere where energy is needed. And we're talking specifically about ATP as an energy molecule, adenosine triphosphate. So just to give an overview here about what phosphorylation is all about. So here's a general protein and we're going to phosphorylate it. So you can see this molecule here, this is ATP. And what ATP does, why we talk about it being so important for energy currency is it donates one of its phosphate groups over. And in the process, it loses a phosphate group and becomes ADP. ATP, adenosine triphosphate, see one, two, three phosphate groups becomes ADP or diphosphate two groups. And there's where that little phosphate has gone. So in, for example, something like glycolysis, which is the first step in the process of cellular respiration, glycolysis happens as pretty much the only step in anaerobic respiration, or it's the first step in aerobic respiration. So let's take a look here. When you phosphorylate a molecule, it makes it less stable. If it's less stable, then it becomes more likely to react. So you've pretty much done something called activate the molecule. So adding energy to it has activated the molecule. The phosphate ion is actually PO4 uh, three minus, but that's really gonna come up and you don't really need to know that. But we are phosphorylating something to activate it because we've made it less stable in a sense. Many metabolic reactions require ATP. If you just look at glycolysis here, this diagram is way more detailed than what you need for even higher level IB uh, diploma program biology. But the truth is the more you learn this and the higher up you go in college or advanced college classes, you'll see that the actual reactions, there's a lot more that are actually happening. And each one of these is an important reaction. And several of the steps you can see require the use of energy ATP which they've shown with a cool looking sunburst to remind us that ATP is all about energy why do we need this type of thing to happen well because a lot of reactions don't have enough energy to be able to proceed and that may be a good thing because we don't need every single possible reaction to be happening all the time if we can somehow prevent them from happening and only make them happen when we need them and produce the substances that, substances that we need, then the ATP can be kind of a, uh, a trigger to make sure that that reaction only happens when it's necessary. So energy absorbing reactions need to be linked to energy releasing reactions. And for those of you who are interested uh, in making a chemistry link here as well to uh, endergonic reactions need to be linked to exergonic reactions. In other words, energy absorbing reactions need to be linked to reactions that are producing energy. It also allows us to not have to constantly be replacing uh, our used energy sources. If you can figure out how to link one reaction to another, we don't have to rely on external energy for everything that we're doing. So you're going to see this everywhere. You're going to hear about ATP synthetase, which is an enzyme that helps to produce ATP. You're going to need to point out where ATP is used for a lot of different reactions in respiration and in photosynthesis. And even when you're just moving something against its concentration gradient, for example, through the plasma membrane, the sodium potassium pump, this links to the nervous system as well, action potentials, resetting sodium and potassium. Anyways, you're going to see this everywhere. And hopefully this short video will help you to understand what it is you are talking about whenever you talk about ATP.